So in the previous video, we got a good understanding and a good look at the main components that make up an ecosystem and how we study it in ecology. Now we're going to dive further in this idea of energetic flow and energetic levels by looking at the next topic, which we'll entitle trophic levels. Now we looked at trophic levels before in community ecology. We're going to continue to look at them, but in a bit more detail and in a bit broader context. Because again, we're going broader and broader as we continue our study of ecology in Biology 115. To begin, when understanding trophic levels, let's get first a basic background knowledge on the subject. And then we'll look at the actual levels that we see in an ecosystem. In terms of background, I want to first begin with a basic definition of the idea of a trophic level. And we'll define a trophic level as the following. A trophic level will include groups of species, so several species actually, so SWP, based on what their main sources, their main sources of energy and nutrition are. Energy plus nutrition are. So let's relook at this definition before we move further. So we're looking at groups of species, so several species, based on what their main source of both energy and nutrition are. So we're separating them basically on their diets and the way that they uh, obtain their uh, diet uh, foods that they want to use within their energetic components, their energetic needs. Furthermore, we can state that in this background, and based off of this definition, the following. Energy from food, energy from food, so that's why we eat, to get the energy, of course, but this energy from food passes itself from one organism to the next. Now you should be thinking, what does this apply to in our previous flowchart? One organism to the next. This idea of energy transferring itself, not being created nor destroyed, but going from one organism to the next. And this is going to exactly uh, exemplify for us the exact concept of linear flow of energy that we stated earlier in our prior uh, video. And that is the linear flow of energy through an ecosystem specifically. And that is exemplified by this idea of a trophic level and the levels themselves interacting with each other. Finally, we're also going to be stating that based off of this definition, not only is energy going to be flowing through, but matter itself. And matter, I'm just going to refer to as materials for right now. Materials also will be cycling through. And they cycle through this trophic level idea within an ecosystem. So we have that linear flow, we have energy, and we group things based on how people and how those organisms obtain that energy. So there's our background information. So let's look at some trophic levels. The first trophic level to understand is probably going to be, of course, the most important. And that first trophic level will be known as the primary producers. So the primary producers, again, remember how I said an ecosystem absolutely needs two things, the decomposers and the producers? Well, let's look at the primary producers first, otherwise known as the autotrophs. So again, troph, whenever you think of this phrase or this, uh, this root word troph, think of food or eating and uh, obtaining food. And auto is going to be specifically referring itself to by itself. So these are autotrophs primary producers. These guys are going to be those that use photosynthesis. Again, how do they get the energy initially? That's through that radiant energy turning into chemical energy via photosynthesis. They're going to manufacture and produce their own biomass. So that's a new term. Let's write this down. Manufacture plus produce own biomass. When studying ecosystem ecology, the idea of biomass is important to understand because it's a good reference point as to this idea of energy and nutrition. Biomass will give us a good idea to understand it. We can define biomass as the following. Biomass is simply going to be the potential food. Whenever biomass is made, think of it as potential food source for other organisms. 
So this is going to simply be referred to as a potential food source for other organisms. And when we say manufacture and produce own biomass, we mean that through photosynthesis, primary producers like plants grow on their own. They manufacture their own proteins, they manufacture their own growth, and they produce their own biomass through this autotrophic photosynthetic process and thus they present themselves as potential food for others which we'll look at and when we say others and other organisms there are specific names that we'll go over as we move forward. In addition we can finally close out the idea of primary producers by looking at some basic examples that you probably already know of things like plants that's what I've mentioned already um, you have to remember that ecosystems are not just on land but they're actually in water as well and oftentimes with water we have algae associated with it and even cyanobacteria are going to be big big players in this ecosystem primary producer role and remember cyanobacteria all the way back in the origin of life were one of the first organisms ever to utilize photosynthesis to utilize this idea of manufacturing and producing their own biomass and we realized that this was a really really big and important switch in terms of how to obtain energy and how to uh, get food for yourself so that you can have this idea of a trophic level. So this is a very primitive and ancient trophic level that has a primary producer within it, the cyanobacteria. So now that we have primary producers, we have to have those individuals that use this primary producer biomass that's produced and manufactured on its own within its own level and have to see that these are going to be eaten by somebody. Somebody's going to eat these primary producers and we call those individuals consumers. They are consumers because they consume. And so when we state that we are looking at consumers, we are then looking at what we call heterotrophs no longer autotrophs but heterotrophs so troph meaning food hetero meaning different types of food basically getting it not from yourself but from others and we can define consumers as the following they obtain energy and when we say obtain energy we always probably just mean obtain food right obtain energy from organic molecules that are produced by other organisms that are produced produced by producers essentially right produced by other organisms much like you and I we eat plants or we eat other animals we are thus heterotrophs we cannot do this photosynthesis we cannot do this on our own thus we need to obtain energy from others by consuming them thus we are consumers very easy to remember in terms of consumers Another thing to understand are the various types of consumers that an ecosystem presents. And the types are pretty broad and also very specific in terms of the way that we study them. We can start by looking at the primary consumer within an ecosystem trophic level. A primary consumer, which I've denoted as one degree, meaning primary, would be the following. Would be anybody that simply feeds on producers. Feeds on producers. They exclusively eat the producers, they exclusively eat plants. You probably know this from fourth grade as the herbivores and that's exactly what they are. Mostly herbivores at this primary consumer level. Moving forward we can now go uh, to the next trophic level let's say and say that we have secondary consumers. And those who are secondary consumers will be those that consume herbivores. And you have again probably learned those who have consumed or those who consume herbivores as simply carnivores, and that's what they are. And this other root word, this suffix uh, of vor, also means and has a, the same sort of Latin origin as eating or to eat or to consume. So when we talk, think of herbivores, they consume or they are the herbs, right? And then they get their food through that, uh, through that uh, etymology of the word. And then carnivores have to use carn, meaning the meat of something or the herbivores themselves. So that's our primary consumer and secondary consumer. We can also go all the way up to a tertiary consumer as well. Tertiary consumers or three degree tertiary consumers, they actually are those that consume herbivores. We don't have a specific name for this. Uh, they consume carnivores, excuse me. We don't have a specific name for this. Um, there's probably a scientific and technical name for it, but just know that when you get to tertiary, you're starting to consume the one right before it. In addition, we also have the omnivores. 
Omnivores are much like ourselves. We are individuals that consume both plants and animals. Consume plants plus animals. So omni meaning all over, vor meaning the food that we uh, obtain or the food that we eat. So we obtain anything, plants or animals, uh, does not matter. And then finally, in terms of the types, the final type that I want to look at are those that are called detritivores. These are often uh, not covered in uh, earlier biology classes, but right now we can look at them as a very important part of our ecosystem because these are actually the decomposers. I'm going to write that as a side note over here. These are our decomposers. And remember how I said that an ecosystem cannot function without its producers and without its decomposers. So what are detritivores? Detritivores are going to be those that get energy from detritivus. Get energy from what we term detritus. And that's simply going to be referred to detritus. This is just saying dead organic matter. Okay, um, I don't have room here to write that, but just write that down as a side note. Detritivus refers to dead organic matter matter. D-O-M for dead organic matter. And that's what they use. They use dead organic matter. They're going to utilize this by breaking down organic molecules. So they break down organic molecules from those individuals who are already dead. So they break down organic molecules and they release simple inorganic molecules through this breakdown. Release simple inorganic molecules. And that release, this breakdown and conversion from organic to inorganic, will usually be things like carbon dioxide, CO2, and even things like mineral salts. Those are two byproducts of these detritivous species. Um, and what's important to note is that the CO2 and the mineral salts that are made, you can actually put underneath both of these that these are going to actually be utilized by the primary producers. They like this inorganic molecule, these inorganic molecules, because they need some inorganic molecules for their own manufacturing and producing of their own biomass. So this CO2 and mineral salts could go straight to the primary producers, and they do. And then, in addition, detritivores are going to be those that recycle organic matter. So they recycle organic matter. Remember how I said recycling is important in our ecosystem ecology, and thus we do get it from here. And then finally, we can finish off with some examples. I know we're squeezing a lot of information here, but in terms of examples, usually things like earthworms are critical, critical organisms in every single land environment. Uh, fungi are huge, huge concepts, uh, huge, huge individuals within the decomposing world. And also prokaryotes. Many, many bacteria do this. Many, many bacteria that we cannot see are involved in this, and thus they are critical detritivores within our trophic levels. Finally, last thing to understand about trophic levels are food webs. Again, we've talked about food webs before, but we'll just reiterate our running definition. This is just a model of trophic relationships, and we're going to be looking at this. So we'll say model of trophic relationships. And that's what a food web is utilized as. As we can see, things can get quite complex quite quickly from primary, secondary, tertiary to primary again, and then to this idea of the decomposers. Where does everybody play their role? That's what we utilize a food web for because it models for us the trophic relationships that are important to us. It models for us specifically the flows of energy. And those are the things that are important to us as an ecosystem ecologist, but not only the flows of energy, but also even the material throughout this ecosystem. Uh, when we say material, we mean matter and energy. And because matter and energy cannot be created nor destroyed, just transferred or converted, that's what we're going to see throughout these trophic levels that we see in this broad ecosystem ecology study. Overall, through this idea of trophic levels, we've established primary producers, consumers, and also the idea of food webs. Be, uh, be very cautious of this idea of linear flow through an ecosystem and notice how we have a buildup of trophic levels as we move forward.